Here are the top five underrated but awesome fourth level spells in D&D. Gravity Sinkhole. Mini Black Hole. Gravity Sinkhole forms a crushing radius of force at a point you choose within 120 feet and all the creatures in that space need to make a con save or take 5d10 force damage. In terms of damage and range, that's already as good as Fireball, but a much better damage type. But the really cool effect comes after. Anyone who fails the save is pulled in a straight line towards the center of the sphere, ending as close to the middle as possible, even if it's in the air. So you can lift a bunch of chumps with this and let them fall for an extra 1 to 2d6 fall damage and land prone. Dealing big damage, lifting enemies out from behind cover and knocking them prone is dope, but this spell goes crazy when you combine it with a damaging area of effect like spike growth. Drag just one enemy through the spike growth and you've slapped on 8d4 damage. Drag multiple enemies and you're cooking huge numbers. Plus, they are then left in the middle of the spikes and have to take another 8d4 just to leave. Also, a lot of forced movement effects have a provision that they can't force an enemy into dangerous terrain. This doesn't. Pull people off cliffs, pull them into lava, pull them underwater and wall of force them so they drown. I love this as an option for bards with their level 10 magical secrets. Fun, powerful, creative and stylish. Arcane Eye. This spell is nuts. Arcane Eye gives you an invisible magic eye that hovers in the air for up to an hour while you concentrate. You can see through this eye. It has 30 feet of dark vision and you can move it up to 30 feet each turn. There's also no limit as to how far away from you it can be as long as you're both on the same plane. Now, the eye can't pass through solid barriers, but it can pass through any space that is bigger than one inch in diameter. So obviously this is a dungeon breaker. You can chill outside, send this thing in, and have every corridor, trap, loot room, and maze mapped out in advance. Your DM can pretty much just hand over the map to the entire dungeon. That's what this spell is really for. Honestly, this is really powerful, but it's not that exciting. The really hype ability of Arcane Eye is the one that's not often used. Most abilities that let you view an area remotely, like Find Familiar, leave you blind while you're viewing the other location. This doesn't. That means you can have a remote floating third eye in combat. This is massive for spells that require line of sight. It lets you curve bullets like in Wanted, shooting around heavy obscurement. The party could have a fog cloud or a sleet storm set up for defense, stopping the enemies from seeing you and cutting off their attack rolls. But you can position your arcane eye on the other side of that obscurement and fire off disintegrate or banishment from total cover. That is powerful and really cool. Obviously, the point of this spell is to be an exploration tool, but as a creative combat enabler, it is also epic. Hello, just like every British person in history, I am evil. Fundamentally, irredeemably evil. I love evil things like NFTs, pyramid schemes, and Nickelback. And I look for evil representation in my media. That's why I love Big Bads by Hitpoint Press. Big Bands is a two volume collection of the biggest, baddest boss monsters for 5e. Now on Kickstarter. More than just snap blocks, every Big Bad comes equipped with full backstories, tactics, minions, and much more. There's a sexy vampire pirate, sexy gelatinous ooze, and even a sexy robot. What can I say? I just love me a bad boy slash girl slash frog slash tree slash whatever this thing is. But these bosses aren't just sexy, they're badass centerpieces for your games. Build a campaign or run a one-shot around thrilling villains with over 25 boss monsters and a compendium of over 100 monsters and magic items. Big Bads is live on Kickstarter at BigBads.com. Check it out, link below. Make your bad guys badass with Big Bads. Faithful Hound. Who doesn't love a cute little pupper who can single-handedly murder an adult red dracolich? Faithful Hound summons a phantom watchdog in an unoccupied space within 30 feet. It lasts for 8 hours or until you move more than 100 feet away. The point of this spell is to give you a watchdog, but here's the thing. The Hound is invisible and it can't be harmed. It is invulnerable. And at the start of each of your turns, the Hound attempts to bite one hostile creature within 5 feet of it, using your spell attack modifier to hit and dealing 4d8 piercing damage. 
So, here's how to pull off an unstoppable murder combo. Summon the hound at a space between you and an enemy. Let's say you're fighting an adult red Dracolich. If you're worried about the enemy flying, don't be. There is nothing in the spell that says your ghost doggo has to be placed on the ground. Then you, or someone else, holds an action to cast Wall of Force, with the trigger being the moment the dragon moves within 5 feet of the Hound. Wall of Force can form a sphere of 10 foot radius or smaller, essentially trapping your enemy in an unbreakable seal. You lock them in with your Ghost Dog. If you're doing this with two casters, you can just summon your dog directly on top of the dragon and have the second caster instantly wall of force lock them in. From there, they are dead. They can't escape and they can't damage the dog, while it rips them for 4d8 magical damage every turn. And because it's invisible, it attacks at advantage. Assuming it only hits half the time, that is still over 900 damage spread across 10 minutes. And you get to watch your invincible puppy tear a dragon to pieces. It is even more more terrifying to onlookers, because the dog is invisible to everyone except you, so they just see a dragon getting torn to pieces by nothing. This combo shreds anything smaller than gargantuan size that can't teleport or dispel magic, and it's not even the point of the spell, this is just a fun upside. The Hound also sees invisible creatures, sees into the material plane, and ignores all illusions. It also barks loudly whenever a creature you don't designate as safe comes within 30 feet of it, so it's the perfect watchdog. And because you'll be casting this each night before your long rest, it's kind of free, because you'll just get that spell slot back after you wake up. Plus, you can put the dog on a Tenzer's floating disc and have it levitating around following you, like a dog on a Roomba. It's a hilarious image and a powerful mobile guard post. Great spell. Psychic Lance. When I first read this spell, I did a double take. Like, I felt like I'd been hit by a Psychic Lance. This thing is insane. You fire a lance of psychic power from your forehead, targeting a creature within 120 feet. Even if you can't see that creature, the lance will hone in on them if you say their name, like a freaking guidance attack missile. Just like with Arcane Eye, being able to attack creatures while behind full cover is massive. Coward's tactics, sure, but you can't can't be targeted for attacks, and meanwhile you're throwing out these missiles with impunity. The creature then needs to make an intelligence save, which most creatures suck at, or take 7d6 psychic damage. Psychic is a great damaging type, and even if they pass the save, they still get slammed for half. But the crazy part is that on a failed save, they are also incapacitated until the start of your next turn. That means they can't take any actions, bonus actions, or reactions. No attacks, no spells, not even any legendary actions for those pesky super bosses. Losing a turn in D&D is brutal. It's usually enough to completely turn the tide of a fight. The fact you can pull this off from behind full cover while also slamming for 7d6 psychic damage is wild. And because it lasts until your next turn, just do it again. Rinse and repeat. Disgusting. And now some honorable mentions. Fabricate. This spell has so many infinite money loops, it's crazy. I have a whole video about it. Check it out. Shadow of Moil. In combat, this is just a better version of greater invisibility. Not only are you heavily obscured, attacking at advantage and resisting radiant damage, but anyone who attacks you at close range takes damage. Plus, it's just metal as balls. And Polymorph. Yes, the most popular 4th level spell is underrated. You don't appreciate Polymorph enough. I made a whole video about the crazy applications right here. Check it out. Okay, and now the real deal. Summon Greater Demon. The best summoning spell in D&D. So Summon Greater Demon lets you pull a demon of CR5 or below out of the abyss to fight. It appears in an unoccupied space within 60 feet and follows your commands. No action cost required by you. There are some amazing options here. The Balgura is basically a barbarian ape with some great spells. The Vrock has a 60 foot fly speed and can stun a bunch of creatures and at higher levels you even get the Hezru my boy. But it's still a demon, right? It doesn't want to be under your control. So at the end of each of its turns, it makes a charisma saving throw. On a success, it breaks your control, stops following orders, and just attacks everything nearby that isn't a demon, friend or foe. Now that's a downside meant to balance the powerful creatures you can summon. But here's the thing, 
It's actually the best part of the spell. You see, once a demon breaks free of your control, even if you stop concentrating on the spell, the demon sticks around for 1d6 turns. That makes sense. They don't want you to just stop concentrating on the spell when the demon breaks free so it instantly disappears. But in reality, what this means is you have a non-concentration summoning effect. Summoning spells are already the strongest spells in the game. And this one doesn't need concentration. Remember, the demon doesn't attack you when it breaks free. It just attacks the nearest non-demon. So you can just summon it behind the group of enemies that you are fighting. If it breaks free, who cares? It's still gonna slaughter all of them before getting to you. And by that time, the 1d6 turns will be over anyway, or it'll be so weak that you can just kill it yourself. Stacking concentration effects is the fastest way to break D&D. Hell, if your first demon breaks free, just stop concentrating and summon another one. Let's do this again, baby. Or throw up a black tentacles or a sleet storm to slow down your enemies while your demon beats them to death. It is crazy. When the downside that is meant to balance a powerful spell turns into a ridiculous upside, you've got yourself a crazy powerful effect. I just recommend getting hold of a spellcasting focus for casting this spell, as otherwise you need murdered human blood to cast it, which is super icky to get hold of. Remember to check out the DM secret weapon on Patreon. This month's issue features the Chaos Paladin of Wild Magic, plus a load of adventures, races, subclasses, maps, and other awesome some stuff. Link to that is up here and also down there. Also remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and uh, yeah, see you next time.